So we've got ourselves a new uh, probe, uh, a stethoscope. Uh, not this guy here, that's old school. This is new school. This is the latest uh, build on the channel. It too is a stethoscope. What's wrong with this? Absolutely nothing. You uh, can uh, do quick and dirty, get right to the bottom of something that, uh, see if you can hear uh, something that's noisier than something else and uh, um, it really has its place. Uh, I've got nothing against old school, but I'm also a new school guy. So this can do stuff because of uh, the speed, uh, the synchronization, how sensitive this is, that this could not do. And the key to this is to be able to synchronize it with events. Okay? So we're going to do two examples here two demonstrations of uh, what it can do and uh, the two waveforms that we're going to uh, pick up uh, I don't believe I've ever been seen on the internet so buckle up. For my first uh, demonstration of the uh, sensitivity and the capabilities of the uh, Stethoscope uh, Pro we're going to try to listen in on the idle air control the IAC on this engine is a 2002 F-150, 4.6 liter. The module is a two-wire system. The red wire on the top here is a battery voltage at all times. It's ground controlled by the ECM, so we've probed the uh, control side here. I'm going to start off by just capturing the pulse width modulation of this unit and then we'll talk some more. So for the first test I'm using the OSC-482, the next test we'll use the HD-6022, they're both going to get equal time today. So um, let's go the pulse width modulation of that uh, IEC. Okay, we've got a capture here, stop that, we'll talk about this. This capture was done at 50 kilosamples per second. You can see that uh, at that rate, quite a few pulse widths were captured on the screen here. For the benefit of those that aren't too familiar with the system here, the uh, idle air control, especially as implemented on this two-wire system on the, on the Ford here. This, is, uh, I believe, is not a true stepper motor. They use a, a strategy that they're able to, uh, in increment, move this little motor. This little motor advances and recedes a pinto. It's got a tapered seat. So the throttle plate at idle is closed and the idle speed is controlled by how far in and out this uh, tapered uh, pinto is. If the engine needs more air, the motor with uh, increments will bring the pinto away from the seat and allow more air in. If the engine is calling for less air to maintain the desired idle speed with incrementation, this little motor will advance the uh, tapered seat to uh, reduce the amount of air going to the engine. This is done on this engine 1500 times a second. That explains these pulse widths being so close to each other here at this uh, resolution. And as you can well imagine, there's probably not a lot of noise being made here by this uh, motor as each increment, um, it, it does its work, you know, it does just a fraction of a turn and um, it does so 1500 times a second. So um, I don't know how noisy that would be, all right? That's hard to, that's hard to hear. So we're going to uh, attempt to listen in on this motor as it's commanded 1500 times a second small increments at a time and see if we can hear it with our stethoscope. I've got the control circuit for the IEC on channel 1 and I've got the stethoscope on channel 2. I'm going to zoom in so that channel 2 the right resolution to see what's going on here. Okay, that's a 
apply that here and see what, what we get. So you can see in between the uh, pulse width modulations, we're actually listening in on that little motor doing its thing with very, very small increments all the time. If I remove the probe, it's kind of quiet. I bring the probe back to the module and we're, we're listening to it, okay? It's very sensitive. Things are happening very fast here. I think that's impressive. Our second example is we're going to try to listen in on the Pinto, on this fuel injector as it opens and closes. As I said before, the power of the Cetoscope probe is that it can be synchronized with an event. And that event is going to be the command of that injector. So we're doing a standard fuel injector waveform where we're probing the command side So let's bring our probe to the base of the injector. And look at that, isn't that sweet? You can see when it opens, you can see when it closes. This telescope can hear it. And then we get a visual representation. And the syncing is um, absolutely essential. I think those are pretty impressive waveforms and um, the reason that this is able to produce that is really because it was able to synchronize to another event. You had one channel that was synchronizing and then the stethoscope that was doing the listening and you could see the moment that there was going to be noise. I think that's critical to the use of this. I think if you're just trying to probe around you may as well use the uh, uh, the ordinary old school uh, stethoscope because it's, it's a much simpler, it'll, it'll do probably a better job than just oh, You really need the synchronization, it's key. So uh, to that end, uh, I'm, I'm trying to develop some more synchronization means to use this. Like it could be, uh, if you can sync to uh, all the pulleys and the alternator and uh, the water pump uh, pulleys, then you would, and you, you put a stethoscope to it, you get a correlation. I think that it can be, uh, there's some potential there. That's not fully developed, it's, uh, it's a concept, but there are parts on order. So I'm going to continue to develop and investigate this and I uh, expect that there's gonna be some companion gadget to this that's going to synchronize it to other rotating uh, pieces of equipment and uh, see um, some of the waveforms that you could not probably pick up otherwise. So, so look forward to that and the, uh, look forward to the build video that's going to be next. You guys take care.